in a barren wasteland as far as the eye can see, with more monsters than people, comes Atlas Fallen, a game that tells a story of a hero who possesses a magical gauntlet that is capable of saving the world from mass destruction. Alright, let me get real here. Atlas Fallen is a game that was released on August 9th, 2023 on Steam for $40 USD from the developers known as Deck 13 Interactive and published by Focus Entertainment. After seeing the trailers and a little bit of gameplay, I decided to bite the bullet in the name of science. Now, Deck 13 Interactive has made a fair amount of games with the most prominent ones being The Surge and the original Lords of the Fallen released back in 2014. The importance of this, like with all purchases, is to do your research beforehand so you know what to expect. As Atlas Fallen sits today on Steam, its overall reception is mixed, and in today's video, I wanted to give my take on why it is that way. So to those curious about trying this game, or maybe even purchasing it, I want you to join me on my adventure through Atlas Fallen to answer those questions and the most important question of all. Is Atlas Fallen worth the play? To properly answer those questions, I will be assessing the gameplay, the story, exploration, and its overall replayability. So, let's get this party started. Atlas Fallen is a game that is all about combat and movement. Its battle system is tied to a mechanic known as momentum, which builds up as a player attacks enemies. As the momentum bar grows between ascension levels 1, 2, and 3, passives and active skills obtained via essence stones are activated. The higher the momentum the player has, the more damage they can dish and receive. Additionally, the weapon the player has equipped will also grow in combat capabilities as its power, range, and combo changes. Outside of combos which can take place both on the ground and in the air, the player is also capable of dodging, parrying, and dashing when in the air. Regarding the parry window in this game, it is quite fair with its timing. Going into more detail about the Essence Stones, these come in all shapes and sizes, or shall I say types. These types range from damage and momentum to healing and cursing, so there's a lot of room for customization with these, as some stones can boost your momentum at the start of a battle, while others can lower your health to 1 in exchange for more damage temporarily. This game contains a huge assortment of these stones, which are obtained via side quests, exploration, and crafting. Each stone as well can be increased in potency with the correct crafting material and currency. Let's not forget about the momentum mechanic here either. The higher tiered stones are directly dependent on your momentum level. It is here where that connection to momentum becomes a bit troublesome for me. Often I would not break above level 2 of momentum during combat due to a special by the name of Shatter. Shatter freezes all enemies on the screen and allows a player to deal a massive blow to their respective target. The more momentum the player has before doing this, the more damage and area of effect that shatter will have. At level 3, it sounds appealing to do, but then you reset your momentum and lose your strongest passives and actives. This of course is assuming you aren't taking any damage. I found level 2 to be the sweet spot for this as the risk versus reward was far lower investment wise. I could still utilize my level 1 and 2 stones while also damaging enemies with occasional bursts via shatter. Now this could have been a skill issue on my part, but I found trying to maintain level 3 momentum was more hassle than what it was worth. Regarding the armor system in this game, it is bizarre. The armor does not come in parts, but in sets, meaning you cannot mix and match different pieces of armor. Also, the majority of these armor sets come from set points in the story. This does not help the exploration part of the game, which I touch on a little bit later. Each set, however, does offer its bonuses depending on which essence stones are equipped. These bonuses help to make each set unique, but the main selling point of them is their power levels which go from level 1 to level 11. While that aspect is great and all, it does feel like a missed opportunity to add another layer of customization into the game with the ability to mix and match different sets. One last thing worth mentioning about these armor sets as well is the perks that come with their upgrades. Perks act as passives in this game in which a player gets to pick and choose at leisure. As the player upgrades their armor, more perks in their respective levels can be unlocked. This does assist in keeping the armor sets relevant, if only for the perks. With combat taking place both on the ground and in the air, the combos do tend to grow a bit stale over time as this game has a total of 3 weapons. 
Two of these weapons are obtained in the very beginning. While I understand the changes that come with said weapon being your main or secondary, this still left much to be desired as the weapons once obtained do not increase in strength or combo options outside of momentum. With that being said, combat is overall acceptable if you are a fan of hack and slash. I found myself in the air most of the time as the main character is quite floaty. While boss fights are not as satisfying as they could be, it is worth noting the effort put in regarding breakable parts on them to end these fights versus one bar of health. Moving on to the story of Atlas Fallen, there's not one worth mentioning or at least of value anyway. The game revolves around a player who is an unnamed obtaining the gauntlet which can fend off the evils of the land known as Wraiths and their creator, Thelos. Nial, who is also a god, embeds what is left of himself into the gauntlet in hopes of a person powerful enough to help him break free and stop Delos once and for all. Nial throughout the game will converse with the player to help add some life into the solo adventure. Wait, what are you? A spirit of some kind? I don't remember, but that name, Thelos, I know it. Thelos, the Order, the Sun, it means something to me. I'm starting to remember my powers. I did find the story aspect of this game to be its weakest point as it lacks depth. This is apparent from the very beginning of the game, which I have to say is extremely jarring. It felt as though I somehow purchased and downloaded the wrong game at first. So if you do try this game, be prepared to suffer through the first 30 minutes or so. The side quest, while voice, also follows suit as their delivery at times is flat. But that should be expected when the main narrative lacks any punch, then the side content would too. We made mistakes. And I couldn't live with myself if you repeated these mistakes. Do you wish to hear my advice on how to master the powers of this artifact? So, if you were thinking about getting this game for its gripping story, then I would not recommend it. Anyway, with the story naturally comes exploration as how else can you get from point A to point B. When it comes to exploration in this game, there is once again much left to be desired. The movement in this game is one of the best parts of it, especially when it comes to verticality. I however, found the maps to be adequate in size, but lacking in the motivation department to cover every corner of them. What I mean by this is the rewards obtained for going out of your way to pick up various crafting materials, cosmetics, and tributes for money all feel lackluster. I found myself losing what little drive I had left to explore the further I got into the game, as once I got my favorite essence stones together, it became apparent that there was no longer any point. As upgrading these essence stones and the armor in the game revolves around a currency obtained from fighting wraiths and not the kind used to buy items from vendors. So instead of exploring for items, I explored for mobs to grind to upgrade my stones and armor. This is a shame as air dashing to new spots on the map is interesting, but only if it has a purpose. If an item was nearby, I would check it out, but for the most part, I stopped going out of my way to pick up what felt like another useless chest. With very few resources tied to the overall mechanics of the game, it is no wonder I felt that way as time went on. The ability to heal is tied to combat. The armor sets in the game, minus one or two, are given during parts of the main story. And most importantly, the essence stones, once crafted, can be sufficient enough to use through the rest of the game. So why bother going out of one's way for minor improvements across the board? With all that being said, there is one more topic I want to cover, and it happens to be replayability. In the game's current state, it is not something I would return to as there is not much there. Yes, there is a co-op aspect to this game which may help it to feel unique when played together, however, there are plenty of other games that would feel more fulfilling in that category. Once the game has been beaten, you simply teleport back to the spot before you face the final boss and the game lets you know you can continue questing. That is pretty much it, meaning if you did not enjoy the side quests before, there is no incentive to try them now. It would have been interesting at the very least if the game featured an arena in which the player could fight harder versions of previous bosses and enemies with maybe another armor set or weapon lock behind scaling the ranks. But at this point, I do not see myself coming back to the game. With all that being said, where does this leave Atlas Fallen in terms of it being worth the play? Well, for the full price, it is not a game I would recommend. 
With combat being its strong suit, followed by expiration, there is just not enough there to warrant its current price tag. I am not saying that this game is bad, as I did play through it long enough to beat it. It is more so to say that the quality of time I spent in this game does not correlate with its value. I am a person who enjoys playing games that are on the shorter end of the spectrum, especially after a long JRPG. But what makes these shorter games memorable is the polish they contain that creates a cohesive experience worthy of replaying again and again. At this point, I would only suggest getting this game during a steep sale, even if it happens to catch your eye. To those who are interested, I also have some good news for you. The developers are quite active on Steam, and their post on December 20th, 2023 indicates that they not only fix bugs, but want to continue to polish the game moving forward with adding more content. So I am curious to see how this game may be a year from now if things go as planned for them. Worst case scenario though, remember, you can always refund this game on Steam if the first two hours do not grab you.